Hello and welcome to another episode of Chubby Knows the Brew, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. My name is Lena. And my name is Will. And today we will be talking about Power Rangers Dino Fury. We're going to be talking about another episode of Power Rangers Dino Fury. Well, two more episodes. Uh, So we're going to be talking about episodes 14 and 15, Rathcon Revealed and and Morphing Master, respectively. But, well, go ahead. I was just going to say, these two episodes, man, they were good. They were good, right? Good. I actually cried. I was in my feels like I. They were good, but I will add before we go on. Ion just pissed the fuck out of me in episode fourteen, but that's it. That's all I gotta say for now. Bro, you always do that. Like, stop doing that. <laughs> stop doing that. I can't help it. <laughs> but no. But no, y'all, like it is uh, it is uh, going to be a fun little recording today because it is, I promise you, like I agree with Lena. <laughs> I agree. Like, you know, some people was wilding in this in this episode, some people mainly being Ion. But um, before we get into all of that, <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that we are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, anywhere where you listen to podcasts, and you will find those links at linktr.ee forward slash Tribe on the Grid. And, you know, we talk about all the things, we do interviews, we do all the things. So if you just feel like, you know what, I just want to listen, I just want to listen to what these people got to say, or I want to, hmm, let me listen to uh, Karen Ashley you know, talk to us about her time on Power Rangers. So let, let me listen to, you know, Andrew Gray before uh, before his little show, before we found out that he was out here causing tr- causing problems and drama. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's do, let's listen to the, all the things, honey. And guess what? We are there. We have all the things for you, okay? So, you know, let, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's get into it. So... Episode 14, Ravcon Reveal. Here's the, here's the, you know, the synopsis. When the Rangers journey to Ravcon, they discover Lord Zed's plan to find the sport generator that can help him build his evil army. Lena, I know you're ready. Thoughts? <laughs> My goodness. Okay, first of all, I didn't realize how fucking powerful Lord Zed is. Like, I mean that truly, because if that was the case, why did he not do anything about the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Girl, I have, I have questions, uh, and the reason why I'm not picking up Mighty Morphin. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying because that's where the last time we saw Lord Zed. Okay, I'm just saying. So, my thing is like, why was he hiding in his castle or her his his? Little place on the moon when he could have done so much more damage. So much more, girl. I'm with so you. I'm with you. I mean, why that, do, girl. Why does it? You know what? Why is it that so many dictators they just sit back and watch their armies take care of things and they don't physically do anything? Exactly. Maybe it's like that. Well, the thing is, originally, like we only saw Lord Zed get physical once um back in the day and and he kicked Tommy's ass which like you would think he would have done more even back then because he he still was powerful back then this is now in Dino uh Fury this is the first time that we've seen him regularly in hand-to-hand combat and he's very formidable so I I don't well I don't know. Clear. Like I, I, I think the suit that they used back in the day, it wasn't good for fighting, and that might that might primarily be why. I mean, maybe, but also to be fair, we wouldn't, we didn't know what we know today. You know, like, and this is us like looking back on what it could have been. But yes, you're right. At the end of the day, why do a lot of leaders? Don't fight their own battle. Well, for one, 
we don't see any of those leaders coming back because they weren't strong enough to fight their own battle and they need an army. This is how you create a cult, guys. This is a real life cult. <laughs> <laughs> you create an army of people and they do your dirty work for you. So this is literally a definition of a cult. I'm just saying. However, comma, we are in 2022 where we get to see Lord Zed as a beef jerky, you know, as Tessa Rowell's character said, because he does look like a beef jerky. <laughs> and he was very beefy. We see him in 2022, and he's all amped up. He's all steroid up. He's all the things, you know, like, and obviously, if you read the comics, and if you haven't, please go ahead and do so, because it gives us a real insight of who Lorzet is and who he truly is. And where he, like, and what led him to who he is today. Now, this is my speaking with the knowledge of the comic series. Knowing fully well who he is and how he got to become Lord Zed. I'm like, I'm surprised you're just sitting back and watching the action unfold. When you literally could do so much more damage. So much more. So much more. And... We saw that there was absolutely no way those Rangers could have defeated him. Absolutely no way. no way. So it just makes me so angry. For the first time in my life, I'm actually rooting for the villain. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely, not like I actually want the Power Rangers to die or planet Earth to be, you know, snapped like Thanos did in the Marvel series. But I really want in my life, to see what would have happened to the Power Rangers, to Earth, to all this stuff on the TV series, should the villain win. We see what it could have been like in the comic series when the villain won. But what is it like in the TV series? What would that be? You know, like, I have questions. And, and, what if the Morphin Masters didn't step in to help the Rangers? Then what? Would the internals have to come out and help the Morphe Masters rebuild Earth? Like, you know, just so many potential plots. So many potential storylines could lead from there. And he kicked butt. No, like, Lord Zed in this... First of all, this just... First of all, I just have to say, I have to say this. Lord Zed was wild and like <laughs> Lord Zed was out here like y'all slept on me for all these years y'all sat there and y'all sat y'all laughed at me and y'all ridiculed me and y'all made fun of me because Rita had me coochie whipped but guess what y'all oh, I am out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's true but I am out here. I mean it's true though but he is like, I am out here. She definitely drugged him. <laughs> um, but you know, like not nah, like she really did. And my thing is, I'm like, and I can't believe Power Rangers even let that slide though. But anyway, yeah. uh, it was 1994. Yeah, I know, but damn, like y'all really let that slide. But um, but yeah, like. Like you said, Will, like, literally, he only really fought, like, that one time when he fought Tommy. And I really do think it was a situation where the suit just wasn't built well enough to engage in battle like that. Um, because the way that, you know, Lord Zed did hand, hand Tommy his ass in that moment was glorious. Like, I loved it. But also, too... I guess for me, it's like I would have loved to have seen more of that in in this in, in this instance because, like, like Lena said, in Dino Fury, basically Lord Zed is out here like handing people's asses left and right. Like, I mean, you seen him in during what season one? Like, he beat the dog shit out them sports. Like, I mean, he kicked one in the air punched one in the whole chest, came back again while the mug was still floating in the air. As soon as he came back down, punched him again and had him and sent him flying like 400 feet. Like, I mean, Lord Zed was out here kicking people's asses, honey. And my thing is, I'm like, 
if he would have been that formidable in Mighty Morphin, there's no way. Like, there is no way those Rangers would have, like, they, they would like they would not have been able to defeat him if he had actually came out and tried to fight them. Like, there, there would have been no way. There would have been no way. So, you know, this version of Zed, to me, is just, like, he is OP as shit. And I love it. Like, personally, yep. Yep. personally, I am for it. I am I all would, for it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I, yeah. I was, no, I'm with you, Brian, 100%. Like, he was just everything. He was, you know what? Now I'm genuinely curious if him and Lord Dragon was to go up against each other, who do you think would win in battle? You know, because I, and I mean that, like, not in one of those, like, who do you think will happen? Like, sincerely, because in the comic series, Lord Dragon was quite powerful. And now we have the series, the Dino TV series, and Frank, Lord Zed's really up there, too. I'm listen, curious. I don't, listen, I don't think, well, here's the thing. I think before Lord Dragon started stealing people's powers and added them to his collection, <laughs> like, like Dragon Pokemon. Balls. Right, like, like Dragon, Dragon Balls. Balls and shit. Like, before he started doing that, I think that he probably would have um I think that he probably would have um he probably would get beat by Lord Zed, honestly. Well, I yeah, think he would. for sure. Oh, hundred percent, right? But I mean like after he became who he became and, and all the strength that he, you know, was able to I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that was also a really good villain. Like he did the universe dirty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like Lord Zed, not Lord Zed, um, Lord Draken definitely um like he definitely did some wild shit that made me go, Oh, okay. I, I see you. But, you know, as a whole though, I'm like, I guess for me, I can't really give him too many flowers because you know how I feel about um I, how I feel about that character. So oh, <laughs> that's why sure. I'm just like mm. But also to like, no, I, I feel it though. Like Laura Draken definitely if if before he started stealing powers, like I think he probably wouldn't beat Lord Zed, but afterwards he probably would give Lord Zed a run for his money. But this Lord Zed right here, I think he would still like Dino Fury Lord Zed, I think Dino Fury Lord Zed still would kick his ass. Because this he is just so freaking just like like this little short motherfucker is out here kicking people's asses. Like, Lord... <laughs> like, listen. Lord Zed and his height challenge behind is like... He's like, listen. I may be short. And I may be stocky. But I got hands for days. And I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> so, listen. But let's just go ahead and get right on into this episode. So... My thing is in this episode for me, like we talked, we you know we mentioned it a couple times and a lot before the chat and a lot before we started. Um, Ion was just wilding in this episode, like the way he just kept saying over and over and over and over. Well, well, the Green Morphin Master said that I'm gonna be, you know, the one that's gonna defeat Lord Zen. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, my guy. Like, first of all, like, let's be very clear. Your, like, hype moment of being the new ranger and being the strong ranger died a long time ago. Like, right now, <laughs> you are just like everybody else. Like, your, your badassness has been left the building a long time ago. So you are not that girl anymore. <laughs> you are not it. You are not that person right now. So... Like, the hype is going, you are a regular ranger, chill out. Like, <laughs> like he still thinks he got the gold ranger theme song playing in the background, hyping him up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a little piece of uh, Brad Hawkins, gold ranger. And it's like, no, baby, like, it's not, it's not happening. Like, it's not giving what it's supposed to give. So... You know, he is just out here wilding. Like, what do you think? Like, what do you think about him just, like, 
acting as if he is the end all be all when it comes to Lord Zed. Oh my God. I'm so tired of his attitude. I'm so tired of him like being like, I'm the shit. Exactly. Literally everything you're saying, I agree a thousand percent with you. He just annoyed the crap out of me. And then when he like got himself blasted and then Zato had to help him, and then Zato got himself blasted near death. I'm just like, really, dude? Really? Like, right. the morphing master never actually said you would be the one. He, She just said, you need to go help. Right. Like, she, when, she, when we re rewind that clip, she never said, you are the key. Mm -mm. As in, like, you. She said, you just need to go help because you are going to be one of, like, you know, the helping hands. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, the team... Obviously, he's always stronger in a bigger force versus a smaller force. So it doesn't hurt to have more rangers than to have less rangers. So I agree with that theory. But she never said, you, Green Ranger, are the chosen one to eliminate Lord Zed. Like, she did not say that. She really did. And, and, and that's the real tea. Like, during that whole thing, she never actually said, like, it was him. And, like, I could kind of, I will say, I will say, like, she did, like, it, the, I guess the way, I will hold a little space. I will hold a little space. He, I guess, she did kind of leave it up to interpretation where it's like, oh, well, maybe she did mean it like that, him being, like, the special chosen one. But also, at the same time, it's like, my guy, like, you... I feel like if he was the one that was to beat Lord Zed, then the sports would have been destroyed a long time ago. Like, this wouldn't even be a battle. You know what I'm saying? Because and and I feel like that's basically what the Rangers, excuse me, the Rangers were trying to say to to him, basically trying to get to him without saying it because I guess they didn't want to hurt his feelings. But it's like, baby, if you if you was that girl, <laughs> like if you was that girl, then we wouldn't be having this fight. Because if you're strong enough to defeat Lord Zed, you're strong enough to, to basically to stop these sports. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and and that's my thing. It's like. You bit you getting your ass handed to you with the random spork of the week. So how do you expect to defeat the ass kicking emperor, <laughs> Lord Zed? Like that just didn't make sense to me. Like I'm just like, child, no. What did you think, Will? Um, I, you know I've had issues with Ion for a little while now. Um. Yeah, it was it, it was a bit much for him to um to think so much of what uh the Green Morphin Master told him when he woke when she woke him up and then to oh God just be so uh, uh I don't know if erratic is the word, but to just rush in and go into battle without a plan and without thinking about your teammates because you're so gung-ho on um living out this uh this perceived prophecy uh when they got to Rafcon they found Zed and uh the you know his crew and once again instead of talking it through with his team and figuring out how they're going to approach this he just runs in and then they have to go and like <laughs> prematurely go into battle. That was annoying. Now I'm I'm glad you mentioned this scene because this was the one of the scene. This was this well not the battle scene, but when they get to Rafcon and you know they have their fight and everything, but then they go to the hillside. Because they're trying to, you know, go on the highest hill so that they can see over everything, so that they can like kind of like track where the, um, where the sports machine is. That scene, and I guess the the music, the background music, the scene 
when I tell you, I'm not even going to hold you. That is probably one of the best scenes I think I've ever seen in Power Rangers from a thematic standpoint. Like, mm-hmm. that is probably mm-hmm. one of the most best planned out, well thought out, just... <sighs> I'm kind of getting a little emotional thinking about it. I'm not even going to hold you. Like, that scene as a whole, the like, Russell's acting in that scene... Um, it's just everybody's reactions to him. Like, oh, when I tell you that scene is just mwah, chef's kiss. It is such a beautiful scene. And like you can just see like the way he's talking about everything. Like you can you can see it for yourself, like the way he's imagining it. Like, you know, this is where this used to be. Remember, you know, this is where yeah. this was. And oh, I'm just like, I cry. Oh, I cry. Oh, I cry. Like, and then I am shutting him up, being like, yo, what oh, girl. I wanted to punch my TV. I'm like, Ion, are you fucking kidding me right now? Girl, but you yes. know what? You know yes. what? I will save Grace for this. In the end, he did at least say, listen, once we're done, we can come back and like we can do this. Like, I I did I did want to give Grace at the end because he did acknowledge the fact that that was being a little insensitive. And you know, like, but I, but I did not appreciate him, like, just rushing him. And he's like, listen, just give me a second. Like, holy crap, like, 65 million years went by, and I never got a chance to, like, you know, indulge, like, take in the moment that I lost. I never, will never get back. And, like, oh, my God, like, it was, whew, I'm with you there. But, Ion, I wanted to punch him out so badly. So badly. However, I will say this, and this is my only little grace for this episode for him, was that at least at the end, he was like, listen, once we defeat him, we can come back and we go down memory lane. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad you said that at the end, because I would have hated you for the rest of the season. <laughs> like, Girl, no, I still hated him. I still hated him because it was literally that for me. For, I'm so glad you said that because it was literally that for me when he, when he literally cut him off and was like, you know, we can do this later. And it's like, no, let him have his moment. This man has been all season long, like since since episode two, he has been like episode two, season one. He is like sitting by a tree. No, that was episode three. But episode three, he is like sitting by a tree. You know what I'm saying? Holding the necklace that his mama gave him. Brennan. Wishing that he was at home. Brennan. Dead mm-hmm. up. That scene literally sounds like Andros sitting by the tree holding the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> That's a photo of him and his sister. <laughs> him in the semi deck looking at that damn locket. Yeah. Ciao. <laughs> And I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, oh, that doubt, that's so creepy. Like, why do you have a locket with you and your sister? Like, I understand that that was what they wore when they were children, but as an adult, that's a little creepy. <laughs> oh I mean, he's perpetually still that 10 year old boy. No, I mean, like, for me to see as an adult, not him, because obviously the show never aged in itself. Oh, you're me, saying you as an adult looked at looked at it, it like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I um, it was great that you mentioned that because that was in my notes the uh, the pan out shot of Rafcon, and it was just gorgeous. Oh. Um, and like you said, it was very, it was such a nice scene to see um Zato just reminiscing on the planet and how much it meant to him and, and where everything was. Um it uh it just gave more to his character. I I really like him. <laughs> so much more. And like I said, Russell just Russell killed that scene. Like I just even when he was just like the small nuance that he made when he was just like hold on just let me let me take this in like this is a mm-hmm, lot mm-hmm. just like just the way he oh god like when i tell you my heart dropped because like you could see you could see just the yearning and just the 
the emotion behind all of that. It was just so just it was gut wrenching. I'm like, oh my God, like, oh wow. Like he really just like he nailed that scene. Like it was just, oh, uh, I like I want to shake this man's hand just for that one. Like I used to trip over that first episode when he, you know, when he had that moment after he found out that he was on Earth for 100 and, 165 million years. But <laughs> Like after that, like that was like that was my like number one scene from Russell for like a while. But this scene right here, I'm like, yeah, no, nah, nah. Uh, this is my new scene. favorite scene from him. Honestly, like that scene, and that was a scene that really started getting me all emotional. And I'm just like, why the fuck am I crying watching Power Rangers? Like, no, for real. Like I'm a grown ass woman sitting in my apartment. Alone with my pets, like watching holding them pets tight, honey. Yeah, exactly. I'm holding my yeah, that's exactly. I'm holding my cat like she's literally snuggling against, and I'm holding her tight, and I'm like crying, and I'm like I can't even see the scene anymore because it's all blurry. Girl, I'm with you. I'm with you. I I can't even hold it. Like it was me. It was me too. And then when Ion like was like nah, I was like, what do you mean no? Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you like, doing? When, when Let that man go, have his moment. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. I was just like, I, like I'm like i sorry, but that's when I messaged you. I was like, the fuck, Ion? He's fucking annoying. Like, he needs to, like, take a back seat somewhere. Like, he needs to know his place. I'm so tired of Ion right now. Like, so tired of him. Girl, just, you ain't the only one. Ah. Uh, you ain't the only one because I swear I wanted to cuss him clean out when he did that mess. I was like, are you serious, bro? Like, let this man have his moment. Like, just because the whole thing was, Ion was being so, like, it, it wasn't even that, like, he want, like, all Ion wanted to do, he was being very selfish. All he wanted to do was show everybody that he was the one that was supposed to stop Lord Zed. Well, like it was all personal, like it was all selfish, and I'm just like, wild. dude, like this is not about you. No, and I think my other thing was too that I was very surprised about was that he was gone exact same time Zeta was gone from Rafcon. Why doesn't he feel the same emotions? Because right. I, like, I feel like ever since he came back, all he's been doing is indulging in what Earth can provide for him and what Earth gives. Where like. Zato recognizes that Earth is now his new home for now, but he would always bring up little pockets of home. And I love that, you know, like, well, like he'll say to like, um, what's baby Bob's name now? Like, I don't remember. <laughs> so on. So, yeah, like he's like, I love oh. that you are calling this baby, baby Bob. And I love it. But go ahead. <laughs> You know, like, remember that one episode where he's like, oh, just like how we used to make back home in, uh, on Rafcon. I can't remember what it was. It was some kind of, like, food, right? And oh, a flargan like, cake or something? Yes, or flargan. No, it wasn't even that. Like, it was, like, last episode or the episode before that. And then it was a scene where, um, uh, it was a scene where, uh, Ollie and, uh, what's her face were trying to get together. But then. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, just, like, I can't remember I just, exactly what that was, but. Right, yeah. right. But it was like something, right? And I just love the little snippets that he has throughout the whole season or two seasons, really, where he just keeps bringing up random stuff that happens on Rafcon. And I love that. I genuinely love that because it, for me, it, it carries on forward that like he's still who he is while embracing the new person he's becoming or the new alien he's becoming. And I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that so much. You know, oh, flar like, you know, like the cake, the last seed, and like just little things. Oh, reminds me of home, reminds me of home. I love that. It's just... And, that, and oh. that's what's so beautiful about it. It's like this character is basically stranded away from home and he wants to go back. Yeah. Like he wants to go back home. And it's like, you would think that Ion would be the exact same way. Exactly. Like, you would think that, but, but he's, he's not. not. He's the complete opposite of that. It's like he's made peace with not being there. No, no I don't even think he made peace. If I'm being honest <laughs> with you, I feel like he's deflecting. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. I feel like he's deflected because he's trying way too hard to be accepted on Earth. To love. Interesting. Okay. Earth too. You know, like, he goes out of his way, you know, to sort of be like, oh, unlimited ice cream. Oh, sign me up. Oh, this is what Earth can give me? Oh, my God. Sign me. Like, I think he just goes too hard on that, if that makes sense. So I feel like in a way he could be deflecting and maybe deep down inside, maybe we will, maybe we will get an episode where he does release his true feelings and explains to everybody why he's never really expressed it. Maybe, or maybe I'm wrong and maybe we'll never know. Right. And maybe he's exactly what we think he is. The selfish prick mm-hmm. who doesn't seem to care about Ralph Khan or, <laughs> or allowing Nato to have his moments and like, you know, just trying to race all trace of home. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know what? I, I appreciate the fact that he's so different from Zato, but I, I wish that they would give more of a reason why and ex- explain it better. And because, like, we already saw this in season one, and it, it seemed like he learned his lesson, but now right. he's like going back to to doing the same things, right. the same things. So, I also so, um, would love, and I'm not sure if if you guys caught that, and 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 I just never caught it. But we see their friendship now here on Earth, but we never see their what their friendship looked like before that. Like the status that they were close before, or were they just on the same in the same army? It is no, they were close. They I were believe close. they were close they were. because yeah. remember they um when you had that flashback because that was the whole thing of like why he wanted to fight Zato so bad and take yeah. over was yeah. because they were apparently i guess like two i guess officers two leading officers and you know zato was the actual leader and i guess the ion was like his you know second in command yeah and he was like yo like this is a bad idea and zato went ahead and went with the supreme commander anyway and yeah. that's how the sports ended up destroying Rafcon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he blamed all of that on Zato. Right. But I think that he and Zato, uh, uh, well, basically, how it looked like, how it kind of was perceived from the beginning, they were always close. That's yes. kind of how it felt. Exactly. And that's what I was just going to say. Cause I remember like the way they, they they used to talk was like, oh my God, like we were fighting together. We were this, we were that. Right. But then, right. but then going forward, we never saw what their friendship looked like. Like what I mean by that is kind of like again, like with with Baby Bob and Zayto, we knew that they always work together. So they have like this, like you know, like this little thing where uh, Baby Bob is like, oh, you know, he used to really love this when he's back on Rafcon. Like I'm gonna go make him something. You know, like little things like that where she shows signs that she cares for him deeper than just the fact that they work together. You know, like. Where she'll be like, oh, you know what? I think Sada will love this. So she will do something for him, right? So it's just like little things that right. she would reveal that shows that they always had a close working relationship. But in a way, she always kind of looked out for him, you know? Like, even when he was dying, she was like, "Um, his vitals are dropping. And unfortunately is actually beyond anything I could ever help him with. And and you can see that she was genuinely sad about it. You know, like, like you can sense the emotion in her voice. Um, right. Obviously being like a AI, she can only like do so much. Right. So even that we got more of a sense of relationship between her and baby Bob than we do with her, with him and Zay, uh, Ion. I don't like, I've never hear them go, Oh Yeah. Do you remember, like, that one time we did this and we got, like, you know, like, random stuff, right? Like, that we got in so much trouble for. This kind of reminds me of that time. Like, nothing. There's no little inside, like, secrets. Or especially when they had those scenes where they could have easily said, like, you know, like, a uh, inside joke where they both would have got it and it defeated a monster with that inside joke, right? But it never happened. Like, and they had moments where they could have used an inside joke or an inside quote or an inside, right. you know, whatever, right? But we have yet to re- we have yet to receive something like that, and, and so that's my other thing too. When I watched this particular episode, it made me think like, how close are they, and how far does their friendship go? Because 
he seems to lack empathy at all for Sato. And they both uh, were just, you know, like, were thrown into a deep coma around the exact same time, 65 years ago. Right. 65 million years ago, sorry. Yeah. And, and, and that that's just, that that's what really just kind of just took me out of the whole thing and just not took me out, but just kind of really made me a little angry about Ion and how, you know, and how he, you know, how he handled the whole thing. You know, it it just really just made it seem like, like I said, it just felt really selfish. Like, it's just like, dude, you can't, you went out of your way to just be extremely selfish to this man. And, and he's literally like trying to get his life together. Like, he's really trying to like, be like, yo, like, this is a lot. Like, let me take this in for a bit. And you just like, all right, girl, you had enough. Like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like... That's really what it was given. And I'm like, I don't, mm, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, this is man's home. And it's your home too. So you you doing too much. But um, but yeah, so and plus let's also just I don't know what I don't know what the y'all felt like this, but I was looking at Rafcon and I'm like, yo, Rafcon looked fire. Like it was fire. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, Rafcon was looking mad futuristic and I'm like, I want to live on Rathcon. Like, well, before it was, you know, <laughs> turn into a wasteland. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, like, I, I'm just like, yo, Rathcon was like, dope. Like, it was cute. I'm what? like, okay. I'm with it. I feel like, God, this show's been on for so long. I feel like this is the first, is this the first planet other than Earth, we've been on in no. like a really long time. Oh, in a long time, yes, but no, because remember we also like I went can't on remember Onyx. the last time. Onyx in space. Um, oh, sh- we went yeah, to a whole bunch a of planets on in space. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Which like, makes that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I yeah, I can't remember. Like, was Marinoid. that the last? Time? Or, or, or not? Um, was Lost Galaxy the last? Or no? I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, Wild Force. When, when, um, they went to the moon. Took the, took the. Uh, Leo took the Quasar saber out. Was that it? Well, I mean, like Marin. Well, that was Marinoid. But like, we've been on Marinoid right, right, for right, a minute, right. like back and forth. Um, but the newest planet I want to say was, um, I'm just thinking, oh yeah, like when they went on that, um, I think that was like SPD, um, when they were, they went oh! and they trained with Silverback right. and got their SWAT mode. That's one and I that, can think oh, of. Jesus. How long ago was that? 17 years ago? I believe so. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking about all the other seasons and I don't think they ever went left earth. Let me see. Um. Yeah, they didn't leave Earth at all in the rest of those seasons. So yeah, that was back in yeah SPD. That's crazy, and and to think that uh, Marinoi and Earth have some sort of a an understated you know relationship, and then right Aquatar and thirty five. I'm assuming Uh, it's just oh. So many missed opportunities, but you know, maybe they'll uh, fix that. We'll see. <laughs> well, we saw what Aquatar was looking like, and Aquatar looked crazy. So I was just like, "Ciao!" <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I hope they revise Aquatar um, in the near future, child. I hope they do because Aquatar was looking crazy. Um, but yeah, like I don't know, like they had, they just haven't been in, um on any other planets as of late. So Rapcon really, you know, I I think Rapcon was beautiful. Like it, it really looked like something extremely futuristic. And I actually would love to see, you know, in Power Rangers, them actually, you know, since. I, I would love to see them kind of, you know, go into the future and, you know, create something like that. Or hell, even make them, you know, be on a different planet. 
and you know kind of populate the earth and you know something like that and do something like that or you know befriend other alien planets and you know i don't know but i would just really love to see them go on different planets instead of fighting on earth all the time you know um Mm -hmm. but yeah like that was ralph khan it was given it was cute and then we saw ralph khan after the sporics destroyed it and it was like oh child uh (laughs) and then you know that's when we just saw it looking like a you know a forest so um you know we also got a little piece of um so basically you know the Rangers found Lord Zed again. Well, Lord Zed found ba- basically Lord Zed was basically gooped and gagged as he tricked them, you know, and was like, Well, they'll lead me to the machine, you know, kind of a situation, which they did. And child, he got into a fight with them. Ion used that as his advantage to be selfish. And child, all Lord Zed, all Lord Zed did was shoot his ass one time and he was out for the count. I'm like, oh, so so you supposed to be the one that's supposed to be <laughs> that's supposed to be the end all be all, and you got shot once and got knocked out of Ranger form. Once, bruh. Once. You got shot one time. One time. Child, if you don't sit your ass down. So then <laughs> so then Zado came out. Zato tried to, you know, do his thing and Zato being Zato. He's like, I got you, I got you, I got you. And then, you know, Zato obviously, you know, got his behind, shot too. And obviously he got demorphed. But Zato was in way worse shape. <laughs> <laughs> like he almost tried to kill, well, technically he did kill Zato. Um, you know, so child but of course before lord zed could take anybody else out they magically disappeared and they ended up right back at the base and they're just looking all befuddled and confused like what the hell like how did we get back here and child they asking solon well girl how did we get here solon like bitch i don't know and then child in the command center all of a sudden this big tall helper come coming out the damn dimension. And who is it? The Green Morphin Master. Child. She come out here descending out like uh Kendrick's dig coming out that light. <laughs> she came coming out that dimension like Kendrick's honey. She said, Hey girl, sorry I'm late, but I heard y'all need help. What's tea? So that's how we ended the episode. What did y'all think about that? Like, did y'all did y'all like her, this heifer coming out this um dimension or what? Like, what did y'all think about Honestly, that? Honestly, <laughs> my thing was, what is this internal business? Like, wow. Holy moly. I am very curious, though, truthfully, is why reveal herself after all these years? And well, I don't she think... explained it in the next episode. Well, not really. I mean, it was, it, she didn't explain it, but it was explained for her. Exactly, right, exactly. <laughs> what she was doing. Right. Like, we knew why, but what I'm saying is like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, ultimately, why did she decide that now would be the time that she reveal herself and kind of own up to the fact that she's done all these things to help the Rangers all these years later. I guess that- she said, I can't sit back, I can't sit in the back no more. Like, you know? Oh no. She no, said, no, I no. need to be out. No, no, I get that. She but she been out, you know, she been out. It wasn't like she, you know, you can't put baby in a corner. She was not in a corner. Okay. She been out. Like, obviously, the next episode, it just tells you all the things that she did, you know. But my thing is. Who realized that she did all those things? Like, yo, Sato, how the fuck did you put all those clues here? I didn't realize you were a detective also. Jeez. All right. Like, get at me. But bottom line is, we're talking about this episode, and my question is, I am surprised why she decided to reveal herself now to the humans, to the Earthlings. I don't know, child. We don't know. But 
All I know is she is like, here I am, and are you ready? Like, hey, girl, hey. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it, that's what she was giving, child. Like, what did you think, Will? Did you did you like seeing her? Or did you were just like, child, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, because the Morphin Masters are really interesting. Um, and I love the fact that we're continuing to find out why they're there and find out about their their history. So I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm I was I was cool with that. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna hold you. When she came out, I was like, girl. <laughs> I was just like, girl. She just came out like she come out floating. I'm like, okay, girl, what is this? <laughs> it I was mean, so it, dramatic. I was like, more and- and more importantly, she saved uh, Zato's life. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, that's in the next episode, like, but... Oh, sorry. Because yeah, <laughs> he was still dead. No, you're talking, he was still dead at this point. It's not. It's not. Will is just bringing it off for us. Like, we're talking about this episode. Will is all like, well, the next episode. Well, Will, we're not there yet, okay? <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> we're talking about this episode. And then this episode... He's still Brandon dead, died. but... Brendan, I want to know why she's floating out of nowhere. <laughs> like, okay, why making, did she come out like that? <laughs> like making her grand entrance and like, but no, but like I agree with you. Like, I'm, I think when I initially saw my first thought was, okay, that's very uninviting. Like, no one asked you to come. And second of all, like, why did you come and reveal yourself finally after all these years? And I mean, after literally all these years, you know, like they never really interfered to this level. And when Kendrick's died, where the heck was she? Right. I, Why didn't she uh, I, save Kendrick's? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like now I got questions because when you really think about it, the Morphin Master's been around for literally 65 million years, if not more. So, right. why did you not save Kendrick's? Right. Why did you not save Mike when he, like, fell off the cliff and died, I think? Did he not? Did he do that? I don't remember now. No, he didn't die. I remember um, Magnet Defender um, basically uh, I... stole his body without his I... permission. Yes, yes. Okay, never mind. Not him. <laughs> you know, my point is, is that like, there could have been so many, and you know what? Like, I have questions. Why do you, that's why I'm kind of like, why did you decide to reveal yourself now? And not that I'm not grateful, now that Will has already ruined it, that she saved Sado. <laughs> but, you know, wouldn't it be more dramatic if he died? Or not, not that I want him to die, but like, you know, like, or like, he was like on his last time, I don't know. I, like his power just they all somehow work themselves out but bottom line is I'm just questioning why now you know like what really happened in the whole Ma- uh, morphing master headquarters for her to decide that you know what look this I'm out of here and my other thing is too you're telling me that you were okay with monsters in the past kidnapping children and you never did anything to stop it Child. I feel like she was okay with a lot of shit. That was just, I'm just saying, I'm, like, now that you really look back on it, we have so many questions. Like, Caron, I mean, the, the, been saved. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Brody's brother or Brody himself could have been saved. Like, there are so many questions now. Well, it seems like they, well, we're about to talk about it. There's certain unexplained things that it seems like there's an explanation for now. Yeah, yeah. Which, Which yeah. Yeah, and, and I think um, other than the examples that they gave us, these could be reasons for certain other, like, miracles or mm-hmm. unexplained things. But, mm-hmm. let, you know, we'll get to it. 
Well let's let well let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and do it now. Let's do it now. So shall if if everybody is cool with this episode, right? Everybody's good? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, we are yeah. definitely good because clearly we're very ready to move on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're all like, next episode, next episode. Next episode, next episode. <laughs> so next episode titled Morphin Master. The Green Morphin Master heals Zato and gives the Dino Master Saber to the Rangers, returning them to their mission to stop Lord Zed. Now, first of all, as Will has previously stated, um, she goes ahead and she heals Zato. You know, Zato is now alive again. So she does have the power to do that. So it's well, given real like, okay, exactly girl. Exactly die. Who's just on the verge of death? I mean, I mean, you might as well say like the boy was dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, she, I mean, he didn't die like officially, but like, you know, he was there. Like he was knocking on um heaven's door, honey. And um God just ain't got there yet. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hold on, hold on, I'm coming. Hold on. Let me get let me let me get myself together real fast. You know, hold on. And then that's when Green Morphin Master was like, All right, girl, hold on. Like, I got you. And then Green Morphin Master called his spirit back. And then he was, and then God sitting there waiting at the door, like, wait, where this bitch went? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of how that went. Oh, well, you think it's <laughs> so gone he was by like now. right there. <laughs> you think it's gone by now? We'll get a uh, what's it called? Windows doorbell. What are they called? <laughs> The ring. <laughs> <laughs> right. You go ahead and buzz him in, and then he just sitting there on his smartphone, like, all right, girl, like let me go ahead and unlock this thing. You can go ahead and come on in, child. Go ahead. The, the gate open. Go ahead and walk through. But child, like, God ain't got there yet. So God was just like, All right, girl. So I got to get to this door. Hold on. And child, Zito done already went back honey and god just sitting there looking at the door like what 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 is what, what is heaven went but anyway so zato is back alive and everybody's like oh my goodness you are a moving master oh my god and she's like yes honey it's me honey. It, it's me honey it's me and you know everybody's all gagged and everything and I mean, like everybody's making jokes I mean, first of all i, I did not know these morphers ma- these morphers masters that tall but go ahead I- I was just about to say, I was just going to say, I'm not going to lie. They were, like, beautiful. Like, They're freaking huge. Beautiful and, like, ginormous and, like, just very, um, I don't know how to explain it, but just very, like, I'm in charge present. You know, like, I'm very, like, I'm here. Like, I don't, they were just very, like, so, so, wow. Wow, words. Um, yeah, they they were just like the diamond of the party. I guess if Bridgerton's like saying they were the diamond of the night. So, listen, they said we are out here, honey. We are out here, and I'm just like I for, I did not know that they were that tall. I'm like I'm just thinking they were like like normal people height, and these mugs are like eight foot tall. I'm like, wow, okay, that's freaking cool. Um, but she just, you know, standing there being all big and shit. And they just like, yo, so what's up? Like, you saved us. And she's like, Yeah, girl, I saved you, honey. And you know, they're like, she's like, they're like, hold on, like, we're glad you saved us, but there's no way that we can defeat Laura Zed. And she was like, Oh no, I saw y'all struggling. <laughs> she was like, Oh no, I know. That I know y'all can't part- be here kills me she, she was, was like oh i know <laughs> oh i see i've seen oh, okay she was like oh no girl that ain't nothing new i knew that so that's why i came here you. you know not only to save you but to also be like you know hey let me go ahead and you know give you you know a little piece of weapon to go ahead <laughs> and assist you on your journey hey, that so she, weapon was very deadly i was yo just- I was just like, what is this witchcraft? Because that sounds like witchcraft to me, where, you know, when you try to take a life, another life has to end, like sort of like a balance or something like that. Right. I was like, that's a witchcrafty shit. Like, I didn't know Power Rangers was that dark. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo, oh, I, I'm not even going to hold you. I did kind of gasp. I was like, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> she was like, now you can use this all you want. 
But the moment that you call forth its real power, which is the power of all of your zords, like you gonna die. And it's like, whoa, right? <laughs> this went dark immediately. <laughs> Right, like it was like we just say Zato, but if y'all want to use it, y'all gonna one of you is gonna die, and you're like, what? I'm, I'm sorry. I, what now? This is giving me very American horror story slash like the haunting, chilling adventures of Sabrina, like just very witchery and like morbid. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, ooh, child, this is a, wow, okay, wow. But nah, she was just like, yeah, so any, you can use this all you want, you know, but just don't use this real power unless you want to die. And <laughs> they were just like, okay, all right. Um, But then right as this happened, child, another portal opens. And child, another big tall motherfucker comes from sliding through. And child, it's the blue morphing mask. And the blue one is like, oh, hey, girl. So what you doing over here? And she was just like, oh, hey, you know, I'm just over here just, you know, talking with the rangers. And he was like, girl, stop lying because I know what you was doing. Obviously and she's like, what, you what you talking about? It took them a really long time to figure it out. Oh, right. But she was just like, what you talking about? And he, he was like, no, oh, you know what I'm talking about. You over here assisting people and you know doggone well that we are not supposed to be interfering with human affairs. And child arrangements was gagged, honey. They was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, gagged. I was like, I swear to God, this is like a trailer out of like the internals. <laughs> you said that in the chat and I hollered. I literally hollered when you said that in the chat. So I was like, this is like the internals. But no, like they really are. They were just like, we're not supposed to be assisting anybody. Like, what are you doing? And they even made hint that the rest of the morphing masters are destroyed. So it's only those three. What do you think about that? Because I thought that that was really freaking cool. Not that they're dead, but just because <laughs> that's wow. cool. But you know, I, <laughs> I was just no. like, wow. So you know what it made me thought of? It made me mm -hmm. thought of the tri the tr tribunal of magic, and and they were giving us, they were giving us tribunal of the magic like vibe because there was also you know two male spirits and a female, and again the female was the voice of reason and the male was very you know headstrong on something and then the red was sort of like the leader. So then mm -hmm. it made me wonder, like, what if they were the Tribunal of Magic in disguise? I don't I don't think they were the Tribunal of Magic as much as they probably, like, created them. You know? Like, I kind of feel like they probably would have, like, created the Tribunal of Magic in order to assist with magic. Kind of a thing. Kind of like with the um, the prism. Like with the uh, what is it? The uh, Nexus Prism for like Ninja Steel or like the Zio Crystals for Power Ranger Zio kind of a thing, where they just create all these random things. <laughs> I feel like they probably created the um, the uh, Tribunal of Magic just to be like, all right, so you're going to be over magic, and yeah, just so that we don't have to do it, kind of a thing. But that's just my speculation. I mean, you could be right. It could it could be like apparitions of like <laughs> of the of the um of magic or something but i don't know i just kind of get that feeling of like they were just kind of like oh well you know we'll just kind of create them too um because that's what it just kind of seems like the morphing masters are just out here creating shit so and just kind of being like all right so we're going to create you you're going to be over this power that is going to create this team and yeah deuces and run off um but yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I just really thought that that was so interesting that they were just like, you know, we decided that we're going to separate ourselves from participating in anything because, you know, we've lost our comrades due to trying to, you know, participate. So that means they lost Black, Blue, 
and gold. And well, pink. that's that. That's interesting. No, no, no. I, black gold and black gold and wait, black gold and pink. Yeah, black gold and pink. That's what they lost. I didn't take it that they. When he said that they lost other Morphin Masters, I assumed that we just didn't, in that moment, see the other ones that we were introduced to. I thought that he was talking about, like, there were even more than the six. Mm -mm. No, he he definitely made it seem like they were dead. Like, that's what it sounded like. Because that was the whole point of them, like, not, you know, fighting anymore, was the fact that the other Morphin Masters (laughs) were destroyed in battle. That's what it that's what it sounded like to me. It was like, nah, we ain't participating in this shit no more because we done lost our brother. Mm. So they're just like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> we ain't we ain't mm. getting involved no more. That is the rule. Nah. Like nobody gets to participate. And Green is out here like, yeah, so uh I'm just gonna just step away to act like I'm gonna go use the bathroom and I'm actually gonna go assist them. Thanks, bye. So you know <laughs> so some of the um some of the things that uh they said that uh Green was responsible for was uh saving Dev, Dev Devon from uh Beast Morphers from a meteor, and I think the meteor had the Jason's power coin in it, and that's how they did the grid connection episode. Mm-hmm. And then, um, what was the other one? Uh, um, the, the legendary war, the legendary, but yeah, that, um, that was something else. Uh, I can't remember, but I'm assuming that oh, there were uh, other, steel. oh, steel becoming human, yeah, also from Beast Morphers. So I'm assuming that there were other moments throughout Power Rangers history that she, you know, facilitated. Like a big one I'm assuming would be Kendrick's coming back to life. Absolutely. That's the first one I thought of immediately. I was like, oh, no, she definitely probably revived Kendrick's because I'm sure Kendrick's was dead. Like Kendrick's was like, (laughs) she was done, honey. She was dead. (laughs) And you know what? I wonder if she had anything to do with maybe resurrecting Alex uh, back in, uh, was that, Time Force? I don't think Alex was dead, though. I don't think he was dead. Didn't, weren't there, like, t- they made it seem like because time, well, at least that's how I interpreted, interpreted it, because time was um, being... Well, things were being changed in 2001 that it changed things in 3001. Mm-hmm. I mean, that why. could be right, but you you, act, you might actually be right, though. I mean, but I I just always assumed that Alex didn't necessarily die. He was just wounded really badly. Like, that's what I assumed. I just assumed that, like, Rancic almost brought him near death and almost killed him, but he didn't exactly kill him. Because remember... When you know he slashed him or whatever, and Jen let out that no, <laughs> that was a big ass explosion. I mean, child. <laughs> and then <laughs> okay, and then he's like, "You and me, just like forever." And as soon as that hand dropped, all of a sudden, you seen paramedics came rushing in like immediately. So I'm like, I mm. think they probably saved his life. At that moment. I think at that moment they saved his life. Because like he was about to go. Like Rancic definitely put the hurting on um poor Alex. But um, which honestly, real quick, real quick, and I just wanna um uh, jump on this really fast because I've always thought this, and I just wanna know, I just wanna get y'all's opinion on this. On time force, on that, on that uh first episode. Do y'all think that Rancic was really actually trying to get caught? Because he really actually caught Rancic a little too easy. And then with the fact of like Nadira and um and Frax and all them helped them escape just so that they can um get the time, like 
get the little thingy so that they can travel back in time. I feel like that was all a ploy. That wasn't implied. I thought it was I, implied. That's what I was thought it? too. That's what I was thought. It? Was Yo. Yo, I really just, I literally just figured that out, like, literally just now. Like, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Yo, I really just figured that out. Like, I am so gagged. Like, damn like time force was smart as yeah, hell for that. Like, saying, like, I still can't believe you never knew that. I, I totally thought that was supply. So, I really did. <laughs> I really didn't. I, I I was really lost all this time. I really just figured that out. Like what? No, but because you was, say what? that was <laughs> what literally his plan all along. He wanted. He figured, which is kind of genius when you really think about it. Like, if I can't win my battle in the future, I must well go to the bat, like take over from the past. So that way, in the future, I would be the leader of this whole world. You know, like kind of genius. So yeah, it makes sense. No, I mean, and I kind of got that part, but, like, I just didn't put two and two together that he actually let himself get caught. Like, he let, like, because the way I thought of it initially, I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly how I tracked it. So I assumed that when Alex came and stopped him and they had that whole big fight in the warehouse that they normally use all the time, um, <laughs> they had that big fight in the warehouse um, I assumed that, you know, he was really, he was trying to go back in the past then. And then Time Force was able to stop him and Alex was able to bring him in. What I didn't realize is that, no, that was his intention. He wasn't trying to go back to the past. He was actually trying to get caught so that he can break out of jail and still, and like, I guess, take all of the mutants with him to the past. That's what I didn't realize. <laughs> that's why I was like, oh, that's really smart. That's actually hella smart. Like, I, that I is have genius. To say, I have to say, um, man, if he didn't die, it just shows how much of an asshole that, I mean, we already know that Alex was an asshole, but to not actually die and you don't let your fiance know that's something else oh no he definitely was an asshole for that and then he had the audacity the immediate gall to bring his ass back take the morpher back from Wes and then turn around mm. and start acting like a whole asshole to the team and acting like he running shit when the whole entire time it's like bruh you are not the leader anymore. Like, all you go back to the future and send us our time ship and, and our swords and mind your business. Like, not you coming back and trying to act like you running shit. If you don't go sit down, like, oh, that just kind of that always bothered me. But, uh, <laughs> but no, like, going back to the show though, the Dino Fury, um. I, I I am kind of interested to know what else she actually participated in because mm -hmm. listen, I am all for you know the the um trying to figure out trying to figure out like what did she do like when did she jump in you know because like I have several instances in mind of when you know she probably decided you know what I'm a I'm a step on in and and assist the rangers like you can't tell me that she ain't had nothing to do <laughs> that, that there's just certain things that i just always was like hmm what else did you have to do with like what else did you do um so i was just started like looking through like just thinking about just random other seasons and i can think of like i feel like she's probably a part of mystic force that finale like, she probably had something to do with that. Like, I just feel like she just, she was just kind of just lurking in the background, like, hmm, hmm, let me see, what what, what can I put my hand in? Child. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I just really feel like she was just summer everywhere, and, like, they really was out here, like, 
the Rangers sitting there thinking like, oh, it's a miracle. And it's like, no, girl, it's really not. Uh, <laughs> girl, no, girl, it really wasn't. It wasn't a, it wasn't a miracle. Um, but yeah, like, I'm just really interested to see exactly what happened um, with that. So, but yeah, uh, what else did you guys think um, about this? Like, did you think that the Morphin Masters are wrong for like not participating or do you think that um, they were right? And also, do you think that they should participate or they should just leave it up to the It's, it's uh, uh, I can see both sides of it. On one hand, they could do a lot of um, help as far as if they assisted the Rangers throughout the years, that could help with things. But at the same time, them hiding makes sense because if they're, you know, they risk, you know, being destroyed if they help the Rangers or even if they just are known to be in existence. And then that would just ultimately screw everything up. So it's, it's, like I, yeah, like I said, it's kind of like a double-edged sword thing where I think they obviously could really have helped over the years, but it makes sense that they would not because if they're not around, then everything goes to hell. True. True. I, I personally feel like I agree with you guys. I think Maybe when they were helping, not revealing some themselves the way they did, like with this past episode, would have been helpful. That they could have continued helping the Rangers without being like without anyone knowing that they're helping the Rangers truly. Because if the Rangers don't know who's helping them, they're not going to question it. They're just going to assume it's a pure ass coincidence, and they're going to be so happy that like they're not going to question why this happened. Like you know, when Steel became a human boy. They didn't question how he became a human boy. They're just like, oh, great. He's a human boy. Like, this is awesome. So I personally, I felt like if they just continued the way they were before, that would have been fine, too. But only help in situations when they feel like there's absolutely no ends that they need to step in kind of thing. Because obviously, the less they do the more in secrets that they are, if that makes any sense. But yeah. I feel like, I mean, honestly, like I can, and yes, I, I like, I agree with all of you. And, I, and like, there's really no, to me, there really is no right or wrong answer to this because it's like, like Will said, it's like, damn, if you do damn, if you don't kind of, you know, it's like, okay, if we do help, then, you know, now if one of us get hurt or if one of us gets destroyed, it's like, okay, like, basically, it's done. My, there will be no Power Rangers because there will be nobody to create the powers. <laughs> like, there, there is no more. But at the same time, it's like the Rangers can only do but so much because, like, mm. you know, sometimes it depends on what the threat is. It's yeah. like they need, you know, someone they, with stronger yeah. powers to yeah. assist them. Like, you know, said, like, I'm still shook. Exactly. I cannot <laughs> believe... Even the Morphin Master herself wasn't able to defeat Lord Zed alone. Right. 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 And that is, and that's my thing. It's just like, damn, like, the, like, first of all, let's be very clear. They went back to fight Lord Zed again. And he still, and like he was already about to put the smack down on them again. Ah, like he was about to kill him again. That's what I'm talking about. Like, Lord said was so freaking mighty this this season that I'm just like, yo, I'm here for it. I was here for it. I'm telling you. Like, it's just like, yo, like Lord Zed is out here, like really trying to like. He's really trying to get the girls together. And like, they just were not ready. Like they were not ready. So he straight hijacked the little, you know, sports machine 
mm-hmm. and destroys Ravcon. Right. And I'm just that like, was wow. Oh, no, a whole planet. I have have we ever seen on Power Rangers the whole planet destroyed? No. Wait. Because I, I feel like Earth. we have it. Yes. Earth, oh yeah, Dino time. Dino Charge. Yeah. Yes. Mm. yes. That's right. But that's obviously right. it but, wasn't that memorable because we forgot it even happened. Well, that's true. All right. There was so much guilt from um Zato and Ion because they were saying one of them said something along the lines of Earth or Rafcon's been safe for 65 million years and now it's gone. Um, you know, they failed to stop Zed and because of that. He was able to destroy the planet. Of course, you know, granted, no one's on the planet, but now it's like, how are we going to find out what happened to our people when the, the whole planet's gone? So that was to be fair, that was surprising that they went went there, and um, that's screwed up. <laughs> yeah, but also to be fair. They wouldn't have been able to find out what happened on their planet anyways because nobody was there. Yeah. I mean, but to be fair, you know, uh, people are able to find out things about the past with, you know, obviously people from the past aren't here, like just from like archaeologists and stuff. Like there could have been ways to figure out what happened. It's real messed up. And my thing is, Zato, and this is when I really felt bad for Zato. Ion, I'm like, I, I don't give a fuck about. But no, Zato I did not care. Zato, you saw his life just was just like. His light was just like snuffed out. Everything. <laughs> like everything he worked so hard for every, the day since the day he woke up was just gone. He right. It just left his body. Like he literally was like, "Yo, I've worked so hard to get here, and it's gone in like a day. Like I finally found it, and now it's gone. And it's just one of those things where it's just like, damn, like, wow, like that's so fucked up. Like it was." really messed up how that happened and my thing is i'm just like at the end of the day like this is this was his home like this was his planet and it's like literally was blown to pieces like i said i don't know of other than earth and dino charge like actually seeing and then earth was just swallowed up into a black hole like not like obliterated (laughs) it was literally like destroyed like obliterated so it's just like, damn, that's really fucked up that 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 just managed to happen the way that it did. Um, so yeah, that was really that was really sad. And then like Zato, not Zato, um, I almost just like, yeah, like let's just go ahead and let's just keep going, you know, and, and let's go and stop Zed before he destroys Earth. Oh my Earth. god! When he said that, like, I was uh... like, can you give a moment of peace for a second? Let him take in the fact that he just found his home again. He just right. found it. You cut him off from going down memory lane. And now you're telling him to get over your grief? Yes. Like, you are too much, Ion. I'm sorry. It's just like, my guy, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> like what is wrong with you like I just don't understand I genuinely don't understand what's wrong with what's wrong with him like he gets on my last nerves like he's like he is really getting on my nerves and I'm just like I'm so annoyed with Ion in this show so far like this these two episodes so far I'm just like Ion just really pissed me off um and just the fact that Ion just is like Let's let's just go back. Let's go back and try to defeat him before he destroys Earth. And you know, it's like, okay, cool. They get to Earth. Child, you know, Zed already done set up thing and it's like, let's go. 
The Rangers get there. Now, I'm not even going to lie. That joke was with, with Ion not knowing his earth animals. I kind of laughed. I thought that was cute. But that was like the only moment I was just like, okay, I'll give you that. I thought that was cute. No. I'm like, <laughs> what? But um, <laughs> but uh, but they went ahead and wore, did their little fight or whatever. Um, what did you think about this? Like, what did you think about that fight? Because I thought it was actually pretty interesting. And also, too, um, not Void Queen and her boo thing popped up and was like, you know, what's T? We you you first of all, you jacked our our generals. You stole them from us. And it's like, and now you back? Like, what's T? You know what I'm saying? So I thought that that was very interesting, that dynamic um, between the villains. Like, what did you think about all of that? They were so chill about it. I think the only reason why they were chill was because it was like, okay, well, they, they, saw, they, they saw that they could get something out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's the only reason why they were chill was because they were like, okay, well, we can get something out of it. Versus, you know what I'm saying? Um, versus being like, you know, you elite, like you're going to give us something for, you know, what we, for, you know, not doing whatever. So obviously if you're going to give us something, we're not going to trip. That's kind of what I, what I saw it as. Which I appreciated. I was like, okay, cool. They seem pretty reasonable to be bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I um, I, I'm having fun with um, just the the morph fights when uh, the fact that everybody gets to wear armor, um, like even the girls, and they all yes. get to use like the same thing. It's kind of like equal footing except for um can anybody other than zato use that that red armor yes i can't remember yeah uh hobby okay. did. yeah i like right 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 i like that like that's a lot of fun um these i, I really have enjoyed the more fights um this season so far like I, I really do. Like I appreciate all of that, and like I like it. I actually like the fact that, like, I like you. I like the fact that they're able to, you know, use the armor too. My only thing is, and also too, I also like that everybody is able to share everything because it's not just the Red Ranger being able to use the bike, but exactly. we saw Solon use it. Yeah. And we also saw and uh, um, Amelia used it. In this Amelia episode. used it, so yeah. Cool. So I'm just like, this is actually really cool. Like everybody gets to use everything. It's not just one thing for one person, kind of a thing. So I, I really like that. And so not kudos just for inclusion, for the boys. right? Right. Like the girls can use it too, and then the girls could use any armor they want. So there's not just one mm -hmm. specific armor that only the girls can use and the guys can use them all. Like every, if if they want to use fire armor, mm -hmm. they can use the fire armor. If they want to, you know what I'm saying? So I, mm -hmm. I just really like that. I appreciate that. Good job. Good job, Dino Fury. Um, mm -hmm. But then, girl, so obviously, you know, Lord Zed put up a barrier. And nobody couldn't get through that barrier. Even the Rangers, they were like, they used all their armor and everything. Nobody wasn't getting through that barrier, honey. And Shao, who popped the ass up? A morphing master. That green one came back and was like, girl, I got this. Move out of the way. And Shao destroyed the barrier with a snap. Just was like, all right, we done. <laughs> Lord Zed. Lord Zed was like, um, and then <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell me Lord Zed ain't called her a bitch. Like he was just like bitch, and just like <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then shot that beam at her. She shot back and was like, and he was like, uh huh. See, see, see. You can't defeat me. You can't defeat me even with your power. You can't defeat me. And child, she was like, I need help, y'all. I need help. You know it's bad when a morphing master was about to get beat. And Shao, um, Ion was like, 
I know what to do. And he jumped his ass in and not and basically like I guess what did he do? He hit Zed's staff or something to stop the flow of power. Or you yeah, know, knocked yeah. it down or something. And then Green Morph Master mm-hmm. was like, All right, helpful move. And he was like, You ain't gotta tell me twice. He jumped out the way and she shot him, blowing up the little piece of sports machine and turn and encasing both him and both her and Zed in a little piece of crystal. Sacrificing herself in ease. Interesting. I actually enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. I because, enjoyed that too. I'm with yeah. you. And you know what? If Hasbro decides to come up with the toy with them two and a crystal, you know, I would <laughs> more than object to purchasing it. I'm not even going to lie. I would like that too. But then, of course, like they go back to the base. The blue morphin master and the red one pop up, and they're like, uh, so we sense green here, but where's she at? And they was like, Well, here she is in the crystal with Laura Zed. And they're just like, and she ain't a traitor, she saved us. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's not as bad as y'all trying to make her out to be. And they realize real fast, they're like, Well, damn, they couldn't defeat the Laura Zed without us. Obviously. It was like, well, you know, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we should. Maybe we should actually be participating instead of trying to hide in the back like little bitches. He's like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Well, let's go ahead and free her. So they freed her and left Lord Zed in the crystal and said, we're going to imprison him in a planet far, 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 far away. And child, they disappeared. The Rangers celebrated and the end. What did y'all think about this? Like, do y'all, first of all, what do y'all think about this? And also, with Cosmic Fury, do y'all think that that probably might be used as like a gateway point for like Cosmic Fury as like a huge plot point? Oh, because absolutely. I feel like that's definitely going to be a plot absolutely. point for Cosmic Fury. That's definitely a plot. Um, um, yeah, that I definitely agree with you. I think aside from Ion, overall, I'm just going to give my rating right now. Overall, okay. both episodes for me was five out of five. Ion, Ooh, okay. like. You know what? I'm not gonna let them ruin it. I'm not gonna let them ruin it. They 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 did such a great job with both. You see, episode I, like I said, they had me in tears. They had me with my emotions going up and down. Like I'm a 30 something year old woman sitting here with my pets, being like, "Power Rangers, <laughs> why? <laughs> like, what the fuck is my life right now?" So they had me. I'm very very excited. I'm curious to see where this is gonna go. And you know what? They did a solid job with carrying on the episodes and really explaining things that we never thought had a proper explanation that we just thought, oh, it's Power Rangers. Anything is possible. You know, like Devon, like um, being able to get Jason, you know, what's his name? Jason to be able to help him. I thought that was just a pure coincidence, you know, like um was his face turning into a human i thought that was a pure coincidence too you know like just like little things that yeah. now is being explained that i'm like you know what this is something we've always asked for we had always said things have happened but we never had an explanation for it and now it comes to kind of realize that like there are explanations for it the morphing yeah. masks are the explanation so it was it was the wow factor for me. Like something finally being brought through full circle. <clears throat> like that. Oh, chef's kiss. Like they put it in a nice bowl. They put it in the Christmas tree. And that was it for me. I loved it. Mm. I like that. Um, I, and he realized well i guess he didn't realize that he was told <laughs> that the prophecy wasn't necessarily about him alone he was needed to help what happened in this episode happen with um <clears throat> zed being um captured but it wasn't solely him alone it was him being a part of the team and them all working together so um, I would hope that from now on he understands that and that it's a team thing and not just 
make all these impulsive decisions on his own, but we'll see. But um, <clears throat> I like that they explain that. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, like you said, I, I think uh, Zed being captured and put onto a planet, um, a faraway planet, that's definitely going to be something that they have to pay off in Cosmic Fury. And and how apropos, you know, one of the most popular and well-known villains being a part of the 30th season. And I guess that'll be probably where we get his final, you know, the, like they'll defeat that character for the final time there, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, I don't know whether y'all actually have seen um, the villain in Q-Ranger, but there's, like, an actual villain in Q-Ranger that really legit actually looks like a uh, amped up Lord Zed. So, like, mm -hmm. it makes Same sense. Matter. Yeah, like, um, let me show you. There's, like, an actual villain in Q-Ranger. Like, he's, like, the final, the final boss. Um, you know, and he actually looks like a amped up version. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I think that that's going to be, um, probably what they lean with. But what I really love is the fact that they really did kind of make it seem like the, um, they really did kind of make it seem like the new like the Morphin Masters are going to start trying to participate a lot more in um, in the battles now versus just standing in the background, which I feel like can be detrimental because in Cosmic Fury, it's like, okay, so if they actually participate and they try to stop Lord Zed, it's giving real, like, you know, more Morphin Masters are going to die. And then it's like, okay... You know, and then what are they going to do if all the Morphin Masters die or if one of them die? You know, like, how is that going to work? You know? And, you know, just telling that story in Cosmic Fury is going to be very interesting. Because I'm pretty sure Lord Zed is probably going to do some shit. Like, he's... <laughs> Lord Zed is going to fuck some shit up. You know? Especially if he turns into this form. Like, and I just shared um, this villain in the chat um, which is Don Armage. Um, Don Armage is is one of the main big villains at the end of Q Ranger, and he basically is he looks like a huge brain with armor. <laughs> so you know, I think that 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 they're probably going to do that. Like they're probably going to use that form on Cosmic Fury. Well, damn, that's a scary looking monster. Right? So if they use this mug, he's oh. gonna be like, yeah. Wow. I could see them using him for Lord Zed. Absolutely. Yeah, I could see that too. Like, he can definitely be used as Lord Zed. For sure. So, but yeah, in terms of rating, though, um, I, I I agree with you, Lena. I think it for me. I would also give it a five for both for both episodes as well. I enjoyed them both. I thought the acting was stellar. I thought they had some beautiful shots. Um, I just thought that everything about this these episodes were just phenomenal. Like they knocked it out of the park. The only thing that I felt really just kind of messed it up a little bit for me was Ion, but even then. Like Ion didn't do enough to make to make it too bad for me, so like I, I'm gonna go five out of five. What do you think, Will? I would I, I would give them both fours. Oh, um, okay. Good I tell. think that uh, with the first one, we didn't talk about this at all, but the B plot, I thought that was weird to even have that in there. Just because of oh, how much, <laughs> and it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. It just didn't fit with how big the stuff was in this episode. And the B okay. plot was uh, like some competition happening at Buzz Blast, and it's like y'all are 
you're giving that like uh, focus when we're going back to RAF or we're going to RAFCON for the first time, Ion and Zato are going to this planet for the first time in 65 million years and you're giving time to a competition at Buzz Blast. Okay, that's weird. I have to say, so, to be fair, to be fair, not to cut you off, but to be fair, I think if they didn't have that balance, that episode would, would have been way too heavy. But that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> like, it I, could I, be, but also, like, my thing is, too, it's like, you still, I feel like that would have disrupted the balance that we've already had. Like, because I feel like, honestly, like, if we if we had it too dark, especially in the middle of the season like that, and then go back to it kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like go back to the, us having the um, the comedy. I feel like that would have been a little too weird to me. I mean, like, and, and you could be right. I mean, if anything, I think that if you know you have something heavy, um, and then maybe not the next episode, but maybe like two, three down the line. You have something fun to kind of take the the edge off for the for the viewers and for the characters. I think that's okay. And then of course you go back. That. At that point, we would be closer to the finale. Right. After that. So you can kind of pe- you know, pick back up that momentum. But um, I don't know. Like I feel like I thought that that plot was fun. And I think, but I, I just didn't feel like it fit here at all. And they could have okay. put that into like another episode. But um, I, I that was the disconnect for me. And and like I, I didn't hate it; it just didn't fit. Um, That's real. And then the second episode that oh uh, that was good too because we got more into the Morphin Masters and they explained so much of their history um so yeah like these were uh these are good like, I'm, I'm i'm really hesitant on fives just because you know like that means like perfect and i don't i don't think that they were necessarily perfect but they were really really good okay. uh, the some of the strongest that i've seen from the season thus far so yeah all right all right all right well listen here yeah. I personally, I have to, I have to give them fives because to me, these are the types of episodes that I'm sitting here like that I'll be always asking for. Honestly, um, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to Power Rangers, for me, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, dang, like when are we ever gonna have? those episodes that just make me just want to be like, yo, yo, like, and I really felt like th- those two episodes, especially that first one, especially episode um, 14, those, uh, like that episode for me, just like, they did such a great job with giving us this planet that we've been talking about for episodes, for multiple episodes. Like literally we've had, like whole like storylines built around finding Ravcon. We got messages, you know, all this stuff. Like Blue Ranger turn turn evil, even though he'd been evil the whole time. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, all to get these messages to find Ravcon. And we finally found it. And we even got to see Ravcon when it was in his prime. Like, I mean, it was just like there was just so much that went into these two episodes. That I'm just like, I, I like, I not not see exactly what you're saying because I'm actually with you 100. percent But for me, it's just like there was just so much that went into these two episodes that just honestly made me go, you know what? Like, I have to give it a five. Like, I have to because it was just like from the acting to just just everything about it was just like, yo, like this is this is the kind of Power Rangers I want to see. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I understand the whole idea of oh, make it fun, make it crazy. Hey, I'm I'm not even gonna hold you. That B plot from episode 14 did not bother me at all. I actually thought it was funny as shit because I'm not going to hold you. The way people was getting shot with them little darts and they were passing out like they got shot, like they were in the middle of a war and they all dramatic and falling all over the place. Like, I thought that shit was hilarious. And I felt like, (laughs) I felt like it was the perfect, for me, I felt like it was the perfect breather that we needed in that episode because there was a lot of heavy stuff in that episode. Like, if you just focused mm-hmm. on just the Power Ranger stuff alone, a lot of that shit was emotionally heavy. Like, a lot of it was. And so it was just, like, bouncing from the emotional side and, you know, getting that breath of re- that breath of fresh air and that relaxation of, like, oh, okay, I can laugh at, you know, like, Jane flipping over a table like like she's somebody John Wick or something and shooting people with darts. Like I can relax with that. You know what I'm saying? Versus being in this state of like, oh my God, perpetual doom and being so emotionally drained. So I actually enjoyed that a lot. And I thought that the balance was definitely needed in episode 14. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. Like I, for me, I can't even... I can't even argue, put up an argument with you on that because I do agree with you. Um, It was an odd, (laughs) it was an odd choice (laughs) to have that there, but I still, I still liked it. I still feel like it was kind of needed, but, um, but yeah, guys, what do you think? You know, like guys and girls and they, thems and everybody in between, like anybody listening, what what do y'all think? Did y'all enjoy? Did y'all think that, you know, these episodes were fives? Did you think they were fours? Hell, did you think they were two, three, or uh, three, two, ones? Like, what did you think? Like, let us know in the comment sections. Um, you know, let us know what you thought. Uh, you know, we're going to be reviewing these episodes and giving y'all all the reviews all the way up to the very end, which I'm excited to talk about. Um, and yeah, whatever news comes out or whatever comes, you know, whatever new thing comes out, you know, we're going to report on it. You know, we're going to talk about it. You know, we got to give our opinions as always. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this episode. With that being said, my name is Brandon. My name is Lena. And my name is Will. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.